Hi, my name is Maria Elisa Ayerbe. I work as a recording and mixing engineer here in Miami, and I would like to show you how to get really cool, interesting pop vocals using Sound Toys plugins. So in this session in particular, I have a really cool pop song going on. I would say the main difference between pop music and any other genre is that with pop music, you got to constantly keep delivering that interesting ear candy kind of thing. You're throwing tricks here and there, adding to the production as a mixing engineer so that the audience keep getting interested in what they're listening, right? As a mixing engineer, you must always think, what else can I throw in in there so that the production can elevate? Think of yourselves as a post-producer, right? Uh, in the sense that you're adding on to the production, and but you're also respecting what is already there. For that, I believe Sound Toys plugins are very interesting because it's the, obviously you have to use EQ for tone correction and color correction and room correction. We we're dealing with vocals, right? And you also have to use compression so that your vocals are... are tucked in there and you can listen to the vocal the whole way through within all the instruments and the arrangement and also you need to um, make sure that the uh, lyrics are, are understood I mean those are the the I'd say the key aspects of what should begin to be a very interesting mix but it's not about that it's just throwing in the additional things that you can that you can add on to the production because in the end once you know how to dominate EQ and compression that doesn't really make you a good mixing engineer that that is just like the 101 of um utilizing audio tools right uh, it's what else can you add and and as a mixing engineer they're paying you for your taste so Sound Toys specialize in this really cool plugins where they're emulating other gear that exists in the analog domain really amazingly well. And they're also creating new interesting features that you can bring into your mixing and create awesome things. So you can notice right away the difference in tone between Chacho, who's the San Alejo's uh, lead vocalist, and then you have Sebastián, who's Mano's lead vocalists. And then you have all these different harmonies coming in and out, the doubles, and then also you have this big crowd in the end. So let me show you about a little bit of what I've done. So the color and the compression and everything in this vocal has already been said. I just want to let you know that. Um, you can see from the session that I have already worked on vocal automation, not only through each individual track, but also I am routing those to uh, separate individual submasters. So those are already pretty heavily automated, as you can as you can tell. There was also some clip automation and gate automation that I did prior to this. So that's already been said. But remember, this is just not what it makes the song. So let's evaluate a little bit of, of how I felt about the song. So this is like an 80s reminiscent track, right? So the intro of the song is very atmospheric. It has all those 80s pats and all of that. It reminds me of a flock of seagulls, kind of like that thing, those bands. So right away, I wanted to get those delays going on. And for for that, I use a combination of different things. So, and you can tell they're also automated per section. So, first of all, I got this reverb going on as a send. And for that, uh, let's go ahead and open it up. So, it's going to be this one right over here. And I'm actually using Echo Boy as a reverb. This is a very interesting thing to do. You can obviously, to understand how reverbs and delay works, it's just a matter, they're all time-based effects, right? Uh, when when the, the sound uh, separates so much from its source that it, it basically, it transforms into two individual, uh, like, uh, sound sources, right? Where you have the original vocal and then you have a, a separated source, that's a delay. But anything in between, you can actually consider that a reverb, right? So using Echo Boy, you can take advantage of the different types of uh, color, tones, and groove, how this extension of the vocal separates from its original source and also the styles, which is uh, like different analog emulation tones from our original devices from the 80s that we're creating during the 80s. Also, it has really cool filters that I heavily recommend you set up, especially when you're mixing vocals. It's really important that when you're using even reverbs or delays are not like 
repeating or enhancing or extending, prolonging, for example, lots of S's. Because in Spanish, S's are very strong. So if you have a reverb with, a, you don't apply a high cut, then it's going to go like S and it's going to prolong that. So I highly recommend that you use the high cut for that. And also the low cut, if the vocals weren't recorded properly, or there's a lot of hum or like chest noise or even pops, you don't want your reverb or your delay to augment that or prolong it or whatever. So I recommend that you use that. So I love using Echo Boy for that. This, this warm density uh, plugin is very cool. Let's hear it just with the vocal. Qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana. Y saber que estás en las fotos que te toman personas extrañas. Todo es distinto. So, and also I love the fact that you can saturate that. That's a very uh cool little detail that uh, Sound Toys always adds onto their plugins that I love. You can actually change the color of the reverb by saturating it, which makes it very interesting because, again, you're looking for that extra thing that you can throw in. So I love using the saturation from, from Echo Boy. And, and think about Echo Boy as like, in here, basically, you're just replicating this early and late reflection. So it is a very cool device to use. So I'm not only using Echo Boy to work uh, the reverbs, but I'm also using it to create my delays, obviously. So in here, I also have Echo Boy and I like this preset where I'm using it as a ping pong effect and, and it's one of the standards and I love it just the way it sounds with um, a little bit of saturation and the studio tape sound. It's just, it just gives it that uh, very 80s vibe, which is what I'm going for. Qué difícil despertar sin ti en la mañana Y no oír tu voz al regresar de trabajar en la madrugada so it gives it that 80s vibe that is going on very like Flock of Seagulls and all of those bands from that era. Uh, it, it takes me back to that and it's just amazing. So combined with the reverb also, a really cool trick. I, I recommend always just blending reverbs with delays uh, with the vocal because a lot of people, what they do when they're mixing, they just rely on one delay to just give them that that atmospheric bounce off. And, and that is just one thing with um, the cool thing about working on a doll is that you can combine those to create interesting tones that nobody else is going to have. I highly recommend people to do that. So let's check out how the reverb and the eighth uh, pong sounds like. Qué difícil despertar sin ti en la mañana Y no oír tu voz al regresar de trabajar en la madrugada Todo es tan frío And last but not least, I also have a quarter note delay here going on so again, it's another Echo Boy, and this time I'm using it as a quarter note with the Echoplex style, which is a total different sound. But as you can tell, I am also routing this to my reverb. So I'm actually creating this very interesting loop where like you notice the reverb was providing this sort of like little room chamber tone. And then with this quarter note effect, which is going to be a lot more noticeable, right? Because it's actually like down, 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 right? It's that very rhythmical bounce off. But if I'm routing this to a reverb, then I'm adding a tail to that. So it just becomes super interesting. And when all of those are added up, it just creates a very original vibe that, again, with one plugin, it'd be really difficult to create. Qué difícil despertar sin ti en la mañana Y no oír tu voz al regresar de trabajar en la madrugada So I'm getting that chamber, that little room from the reverb, and I feel the, the quarter note delay bouncing off into that reverb as well, but then there's the pong effect, which is going like this. So I'm creating this special moment for this song, which works very well. So that same routing is going to the Monos 
thing and I've automated differently according to the different moments of the song because also when the chorus strikes, you have all of these new vocals coming in, you don't want that much. So I, again, recommend that you heavily automate all of that. So that is one thing that I've got going on. With this vocal here, uh, let's hear, now we're talking about difference in tone. So Chacha's vocal is a little bit different from Sebastian in terms of how it was recorded. His tone is different. Even when I tried to do EQ correction and I tried to do compression, the they just sound very different because they're two different human beings, obviously. They, it sounds to me like they were also recorded with different mics because this was a totally pandemic uh, recording where nobody was meeting with anyone. Um, and let's hear the difference in tones and how I fixed that. Al regresar de trabajar en la madrugada Todo es tan frío Qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana Y saber que estás en las fotos que... So you notice it right away. There's like this high top end brightness that is in, in Chacha's vocal that I was not getting with Sebastian because he sings differently. He's more chesty. So then for that, I used a combination between the radiator and the CQ that I think works really well. So the, the radiator is just basically adding this mixer amp tone. So it's adding this analog sort of warmth to it, just with a little bit not fully there. Uh, let's hear how it sounds with it. Qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana Y saber que estás en las fotos que te toman personas extrañas Todo es distinto. So you can notice right away that there's that additional warmth to uh, Sebastian's vocal, which I think it's it, it just provides that uh, sort of medium um, resonance that uh, I was missing from his vocal. And then using the CEQ, which I like pretty much, um, fixed uh, frequencies here and there. So I used to, I, I cut a lot of the 2.3 kilohertz, which I think it's very nasal in his vocal. And I added a little drive. I added a lot more high frequency spectrum to him and I cut a little bit of the, of the lows. So initially I'm just looking to match Chacha's vocal. Qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana. See how immediately that, that sort of mid-range presence, like very nasally just sort of dips or like ducks in and, and then the, the high portion of his vocal cuts through. Um, that is because I am saturating it and I'm, an, I'm adding this like uh, analog warmth to it. So when we hear the two vocals, that difference is not going to be so noticeable. Okay, that's pretty cool. Then I did something else that I haven't shown you guys yet. And it's called this uh, parallel vocal accent that I'm using with the effect rack. Now, the effect rack is awesome because... What they basically have created, you can see there's the entire list of all the available Sound Toys plugins. And then they have created this really cool list of presets that they have worked on. And basically you can combine all of the different plugins that Sound Toys provides into just one device. And I think that's pretty cool because it's just, it's so easy to, maybe there are some combinations that you've never thought about, like in, in my mind, just adding a radiator with uh, decapitator is just going to be like way too much. But then I was just like, let's try it uh, because I'm looking for adding an extra thing going on. So parallel compression or parallel processing to vocals are very common uh, because it you're looking to bring that vocal forward um, especially with all of these instruments going on and with all of these sounds with the full band playing and horns and everything, you just want to bring that vocal right up front. And um, parallel processing is great for that. So I found this rock lead vocal preset. I've turned off the Echo Boy because I don't want to add more room to it because I've already created this very cool atmosphere in there. So I find that 
basically just adding that parallel vocal to both of them and actually just sending it again. Just that main lead uh, tone from Sebastian is going to work really well. Oh, with it, all of these instruments, I just got to find it. Parallel vocal. There you go. So check it out. Qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana Y saber que estás en las fotos que te toman personas See, extrañas Todo es distinto Una no So this parallel vocal is really adding a little bit of that extra heat and also a little bit of that crunch and drive from the decapitator. I love this E distortion thing that's going on. I've also used the low and the high cut. I've changed some of the presets. Let's see how, how they um, change the tones from this vocal. Qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana. Y saber que estás en las fotos que te toman personas extrañas Todo es distinto Qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana Y saber que estás en las fotos que te toman personas extrañas Todo es distinto, qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana Y saber que estás en las fotos It just adds that really cool extra thing going on in there. Let's hear it in context. Qué difícil despertar sin ti en la mañana Al regresar de trabajar en la madrugada Todo es tan frío Qué difícil es tenerte cerca y no lejana Y saber que estás en las fotos que te toman personas extrañas it's just right there. It just sets it in the front, which I love. Now let's check out another really cool thing that I was doing. So initially when they provided this uh, this extra thing to me, I was just like, what the hell? What? Like, it's just Corazón. that bounce off leading into the, into the main chorus. And I was like, that is boring. So let's let's see what I did to it. So first of all, I sent it to a delay individually from everything else that I'm doing here just to just to add a little touch more. Corazón. Okay, so there's like an ambience going on in there. Uh, a little bit of tone with a lot of drive just to add something different. Corazón. Okay, that's cool. Then this bit crusher, which I love, the Devil Lock, just to add more character to it. Corazón. You gotta be really Corazón. delicate with it, right? Corazón. Corazón. Okay, so now we feel like we're going somewhere, right? And then finally, I just thought, because I don't know if you can hear, but there's that, like, that, there's that pumping synth going on in there. Check it out. So it's that constant, like, gated synth going on in there all the time. And I thought, well, if I use the tremolator and I sync it to the, the tempo, and then I just find this, like, I don't know, start moving things here and there, and I make this also groove and 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 basically rhythmically pump that is a gate that is going to sound pretty cool because that modulator is basically like triggering that uh gated feel right one eighth of a note and and that i thought that was pretty cool so obviously it's way too loud but it's just that added extra thing Manuel 
So now it actually feels like it belongs inside of the production and it's just not that added extra like vocal happening in there. I thought that was cool. Let's see with the harmonies. Okay, so with the harmonies, there is um, the other member of the band. He's in charge of the harmonies. So he's got these little bits here and there. En las fotos que te toman personas extrañas. And it's like super heavily uh, auto-tuned, so it has a little bit of character because it's going to be just below, just reinforcing certain things. And I thought, ah, little altar boy has his things where like you can add presence to that vocal without actually just bringing up the volume. When you create harmonics, you can actually put in frequency an element without having to bring up the volume. You're just placing it somewhere else. So think about frequencies not only as something that you can deal with when you're EQing or with colors, but also when you're dealing with harmonics, you're, you basically, it's like you're playing a piano and you're just using like different keys of that piano. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool. Check out how. Hacen las fotos que te toman personas extrañas. Todo es distinto. Pero nunca hasta siempre ambos fuimos despacio. Sabíamos bien que cada uno llevaba en la mano. So it's that little squirrel happening up there obviously. And then when I add little micro shift, I love little micro shift because like it creates this chorusy effect, which just places things a little bit wider and outside of the vocal. And it can also, again, I'm looking to where can I place this in the midst of all of the other things that are happening inside of the mix. So check it out. Nos dijimos adiós, pero nunca hasta siempre. Ambos fuimos despacio. Sabíamos bien que cada uno llevaba en la mano el corazón. So it's that like that little extra thing that I think I think it's super cool and it just pops up here and there. It's not totally present, it's just somewhere in there hiding. But again, I'm looking for adding in extra interesting things. And I thought that was pretty cool. Same thing happens with these two little altar boys that I have in here. But in this case, I have taken the time to actually just place them in one particular section, which is the final like pre-chorus or bridge from the song. So check it out. Basically, with this one, I'm repeating what I had done because then these uh, harmonies are now reinforcing Chacho, who's the other singer. The first harmonies that I showed you, they were reinforcing the harmonies for Sebastian, but in this case, they're reinforcing Chacho. So I thought, like, I have to be consequent, and I gotta add them. But then, in that in that middle bridge, I think it's just an added tone, an added thing. And again, I'm not looking to just. Uh, add a like a oh now now the bands have an extra squirrel element but i'm adding just extra interesting character to the production so i thought that was pretty cool and then another thing that i did i usually separate my lead vocals from my what i consider like being harmonies or just uh mainly doubles because i like to treat them differently and i tried i i like to treat them as they're like this foundation that just basically comes in usually during the choruses as you can see they're separated they're uh, mainly uh, except for this um four things that are happening in here they're located within the choruses and they're just um uh, meant when they're producing this they're thinking we need to uh, elevate the vocal uh, pr production to the chorus level, which is where everything grows into, right? Like a pyramid kind of thing. So when I am mixing, I try to separate those because I try to provide them with a different treatment that it's not going to be my lead vocal treatment, which has usually that parallel vocal thing. And I've got uh, special automations going on for different sections of the song, as I showed you here and here, right, it, which changes between delays and reverbs. With my background, so I'm usually more of, I'm doing more of a static mix. And um, most of the times I usually add 
these two different pro plugins. So here I have the micro shift. In this case, I'm not using the little micro shift because I like I like to use this delay thing very much. And I also like the added focus, which mainly you can create this like doubling chorus uh, widening effect, but you can also choose which frequency within the sound that is running through. You can choose which frequency would you like this effect to be felt more. And I like this for, for the vocals and also a lot for acoustics as well. And I'm throwing in a little bit of uh, extra heat in there from the little uh, radiator, even with some nose just to add noise to add some character. So check it out. Dime si es igual con ella cuando estabas conmigo y éramos los dos. Dime si hoy alguien te espera y se calla en tu sol. So there's that really cool sweet spot right there where you can feel like the vocals are going like this and they're widening up. So then the effect as you come into the verse is going to be quite cool. And also with the little radiator, it's just that extra added thing where like, obviously not the mix. I try to keep it sort of like towards the dry so it doesn't feel like it's way too saturated. But again, with extra color, it's just going to help you bring that thing up there. Now let's see what this micro shift does then. this micro shift because you could see when I move the detune all the way over there so it's doing this pitching chorusing widening effect which you can locate at different frequencies which is pretty cool for vocals because you immediately can set them apart frequency wise from the entire mix making it wider making it feel like it's coming out of the speakers but then when you move that that detune all the way to the max thing you start feeling that wobbly thing which is not cool for vocals and also that that delay because it's creating this very sh super short delay which is it just makes it feel like there were more people singing to it um when it's too loose it's going to get out of uh get out of pitch and also get out of a uh, little bit of the rhythm in there so i try to keep it as tight as possible but and again i think it's just a great tool just to bring that extra thing that happens in the chorus and last but not least we have the radiator here which is going to add that extra push that we need with a little bit of heat and maybe i, I don't know i felt like the noise was doing something pretty cool without adding uh, unwanted artifacts to it let's check it out Dime si es igual con ella cuando estabas conmigo y éramos los dos Dime si hoy alguien te espera y se calla en tus ojos cuando sale el sol Cool, so I know it's ridiculously loud for the but that is just my entire uh backgrounds master so we could hear what we were doing now it's just a matter of blending everything in comfortably So usually what happens is that people confuse presence with volume or with loudness. And although there, that is obviously, those are two elements that are necessary, volume and loudness, then again, you can create um, other things by widening or by um, locating your vocals at a, or centering that pitch enhancement at specific frequencies that can also create presence without you having to be super loud. And that is usually a thing that people, when they're mixing pop, uh, it gets very complicated when you have so many vocals. And that's one of the very common mistakes. And last but not least, I've also located the, these crowds. Let's check out what they do. 
It's just a bunch of people singing. So with crowds, it's really funny because although you can really tell like there's something like singing like really low and then in like different ranges. For some reason, when a lot of people are singing, all of you hear is which is this like mid to high pitched um, like centered vocal uh, that is also like white noise for some like it, it feels like it's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So if you blend that, if you're trying to blend that among the other 100 vocals that you have going on, plus guitars or synths, which have that like 2K to 4K enhancement, that kind of frequency, it's really hard to put those crowds in. So let's see how this sounds like. See, like, if you try to put it super low, then you're not going to feel it. And if you try to put it, like, if you bring up the volume, then it's going to be too loud. And it's like, well, where are these people come from? So, again, it's just another way of thinking about presence. And for that, distortion, it's pretty cool. So, with the decapitator, going back to the presets, I love the presets. I, I always tell people, when, when you don't know where to go, when you're trying to find something to be creative with, use presets. It's totally fine. Nobody's going to judge you. So I find in the mix in with some edge, which I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, let's see how it sounds. <laughs> See, so now it's like you can feel it's there without having to be like where these people came from because you're enhancing those, you're driving those frequencies, you're adding some warmth, you're adding that extra analog um, distortion that is just going to help those vocals cut through the mix without having to enhance the loudness. And last but not least, then I thought mm, this these people feel like they just show up out of nowhere. So I am totally, absolutely in love with Little Plate. It's just the simplest thing ever, especially because of the mix preset, which is you can throw it in there. It's not going to do a lot with your DSP and it's going to help you get this really nice, simple plate reverb. And then also because it has this filter, which allows me to cut all of those unwanted frequencies that we're talking at the beginning. So this reverb is just going to put this in context like they were actually just singing in a room without just being like they were recorded out of nowhere. So a little something I threw in at the end, uh, and then I was like, oh, I was, I, I, I wish I could have something that it could act as a compressor sort of to glue that uh, reverb onto the vocals that I just added because I felt like the, the reverb could, could just be a little bit... Mm, uh, more in the pocket with the uh, with the crowds, and then I just saw that little radiator, radiator, and I thought, mm, why not? I'm actually going to turn the noise down because I don't want it. Uh, so again, you can use this. Um, this is a preamp, so you can use this analog emulation 
to crunch it. And also as you're driving it, you're compressing that. So I'm throwing it that extra added um, harmonic distortion that I've gotten with the decapitator, blending it with that room. And, and then I'm just driving everything through the preamplifier from Little Radiator to create that compression effect. So that's it, guys. Sound Toys plugins are just really cool. They have a great sound. They're not too demanding on your DSP. Uh, and they're also um, very creative in the sense that they allow you to go further and further away. And I always tell people just use their presets because they have so many options. Maybe you open up a plugin and you don't know where to go or what to expect. With the presets, you're going to find that it's going to take you further away. And the possibilities are endless. And that's it for, for vocal mixing. Remember, you're post-producing. You're adding up and this is a pretty cool way of doing that thank you for being with us um i hope you like it go ahead and check them out and we'll see you in the next one take care bye bye